without y'all talking to me. Go ahead and unmute and tell me how many degrees there are in a circle. 360. 360. So this um, point on the unit circle is zero degrees. It's also 360 degrees. We talked about coterminal angles. You could just keep adding multiples of 360 degrees and get infinitely many coterminal angles there. Um, if that is 360 degrees, how many degrees would land you with your terminal side on the negative x axis? 180. 180 degrees, which means the positive y-axis halfway between those two would be 90 degrees. And what about the negative y-axis? Negative 90. No, 270. All right. Let me see if I can zoom out just a little bit further so you can see my whole circle. There I'm we not go. 270. What am I seeing? No, 270 was right. All right. Just yeah, you're going to count. 90, count by 90s, 90, 180, 270, and then back around to 360. Um, what about the angle that bisects the first and second quadrant? What would, what would, I'm gonna say, actually, I don't wanna put a dot on that yet. Um, take your orange triangle that I sent you I created that by making a right angle whose hypotenuse is one. Um, if the hypotenuse is one, how could we find the length of these two legs? This is a isosceles right i didn't say isosceles so this is an isosceles triangle these two legs have to be the same and these two angles have to be the same if these two angles have to be the same what's the degree measure of those two angles 45 yeah if this is my 90 degree angle and this is an isosceles right then these two have to add up to give me 90 degrees and they have to be the same. So that's a 45 degree angle. And this is a 45 degree angle. And I still don't know what the lengths of these legs are, but I know they're the same. So how could I find the length of those two legs? Well, I'll give you a hint. If you know they're the same, you could let them both be x, and then how could you find their lengths? Somebody say Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Yes, I could use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, leg square plus leg square equals hypotenuse squared. So x squared plus x squared equals 1 means 2x squared equals one means x squared equals a half and x is the square root of a half we're not saying plus or minus because x stands for the leg of the length of a leg of a triangle and a negative wouldn't make sense there now square root of a half is fine but if i rationalize that I'd write it as one over square root of two and then multiply by square root of two over square root of two x is square root of two over two. So that's the length of each leg of this um, triangle I sent you. x is square root of two over two. Now, does anybody have a question about that? Everybody say, I'm still here. I'm still here. Still here. Okay, I know at least three of you are there. <laughs> All right, what I want you to do is take your orange triangle and put it in the first quadrant with one of your 45 degree angles at the origin and the right angle touching the x axis. And then put you a dot on your circle and label that as your 45 degree angle on your circle.
And then I would have emailed you some colored pencils. I had colored pencils ready to give you in class. Um, I want you to draw that 45 degree angle. If you need to leave, if you got highlighters and different colored pens somewhere and you want to run, grab them, that's fine. But that's my 45 degree angle in the first quadrant. And I want to label the name of what that point would be. The ordered pair that names that point. Can you tell me what X and Y would be? Or just tell me what X would be. Square root of two over two. Yeah, because that's how far you've gone to the right of the origin on the x-axis. The x is square root of 2 over 2, and the y is the vertical distance from the x-axis to here. So what's the y? Square root of 2 over 2. Same thing, square root of 2 over 2. That's the ordered pair at 45 degrees. Now, Section 5.1 doesn't mention it yet. Um, it gets to this in 5.2, but even this, this circle that I made for you and that triangle with the hypotenuse one, that hypotenuse being one is actually the radius of that circle. And so this is called a unit circle. A unit circle is a circle that is centered at the origin and the radius is one, which is what we have. So I think I did say in the video, it really wouldn't matter how big or how small your angle was. Um, if let's say instead of one, I'd used a 10 here, then the X and the Y would have had the same ratio. Their ratio would have still been one. X and Y would have been the same coordinate, even if I had a different size triangle. Any 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, the lengths of the two legs has to be the same. Now flip that triangle across the origin, and there's your angle, your 45 degree angle in the second quadrant. What would that angle measure be? 135. Yeah, if we went 90 and then another 45, that angle measure is 135 degrees. And what would the X be right there? Yeah, it's the same horizontal distance as this point was, only since we've gone to the left of the origin, my x is negative square root of two over two, and my y in the second quadrant would still be positive square root of two over two. So that's the ordered pair that um, labels my second quadrant 45 degree angle. And then if I flip that with respect to the x-axis, Here's my third quadrant 45 degree angle. That yellow highlighter is not showing up too great. But there's my 45 degree. Um, angle in the third quadrant, and its ordered pair would be negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2, because in the third quadrant, both uh, coordinates are negative. Now, let me see if I can get that back like I had it right there, and then flip that across the y-axis. Make sure that leg is lined up on the x-axis and draw your fourth quadrant 45 degree angle. 
Oh, by the way, I didn't ask in the third quadrant, what's the degree measure of that 45 degree angle? Is it 225? Yep, we went 180 and then 45 more is 225 degrees. And 45 more would be 270 degrees and 40 or 45 more would be how many degrees? 315. 315 degrees. Its x would be positive square root of 2 over 2, and y would be negative square root of 2 over 2. All right, here's what you're going to get very good at doing in the next few days. I promise. You're going to start with zero degrees, and you're going to get good at counting by multiples of 45. You're going to say 45, 90, 135, 180, 225, 270, 315, 360. So practice doing that with your 45 degree angles. Now let's take the other two triangles I sent you. I sent you a, oh darn, I've already used yellow. Shoot, I didn't mean to use yellow for my 45s. I meant to use yellow for one of these. Um, the green and yellow triangle that I sent you, sent you can be put back together as a rectangle whose diagonal is one. I just made a rectangle whose diagonal was one. And each of the corners, because this is a rectangle, each of the corners is um, 90 degrees. So this is a 90 degree angle and that's a 90 degree angle. And if this, let me think of how to say this. Um, oh, no. Okay. Mm. That diagonal is not what I let be one. Actually, I made a mistake. What I let be one was the height of the rectangle. Oh, snap. Some... Um, I just totally lost my train of thought. Let me move one triangle out of the way and try to get it um, focused on one triangle. I'll get back on track here. What I did was um, make a triangle whose and I totally lost it here. Oh, 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 I know what was bugging me. I didn't want to put it back together as a triangle, a uh, rectangle. That's what I meant to do. I'm back on track now, y'all. I'm sorry. I made an equilateral triangle where each of the um, hypotenuses where hypotenai, whatever they are, is one. And each of these would have to be a 60 degree angle if this was an equilateral triangle. And what does that mean this little yellow angle is and that little green angle is? 60 together, which makes them 30. Right. Man, I'm sorry I got that so mixed up for a minute. And if this was an equilateral triangle and both of these sides are one, what this whole base of the triangle has to be one, which means each one of these little half triangles has a base of one half. How could we find the altitude of that triangle?
let's say just the altitude of the yellow triangle, how would I find it? Somebody say Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Okay, everybody else okay with using the Pythagorean theorem to find this height? I'm gonna call this height Y. And I'm gonna say, um, leg square plus leg square equals hypotenuse squared and solve that for y. So one half squared plus y squared equals one squared is just the Pythagorean theorem. One fourth plus y squared equals one. So y squared equals three fourths. So y is the square root of three fourths or that would simplify to square root of three over two. That's the altitude of this triangle. All right, so if that's the altitude of that triangle, and also the altitude of this triangle, I'm gonna use, doesn't matter which one, but I'll use my green triangle to label the 30 degree angles in my unit circle. And to do that, um, folks always laugh at me because I have the, Hardest time visualizing this. Okay, got it. There's my 30 degree angle. And it's not trimmed perfectly, but you can put the 30 degree angle at the origin and then make sure you have that long leg on the X axis. And then with my green pen, I'm going to mark my 30 degree angle. And give me the coordinates of that 30 degree angle. What would X be? How far have we gone horizontally from the origin? <clears throat> Square root of three over two. Right. And how far have we gone vertically from the origin? A half. Now that's 30 degrees. I could flip it and put my 60 degree angle at the origin and mark my ordered pair at 60 degrees. I'm gonna do that in red. It's about right there. That's my 60 degree angle. And what is my horizontal distance from the origin? I don't, I don't have the back side of that triangle label, but I can still see that this is my half and that's my square root of three over two. So this ordered pair would be a half square root of three over two. Hey, and by the way, we didn't label our quadrantal angles. Um, this zero degrees, what ordered pair is at zero degrees if this is a unit circle and that radius equals one? What's that ordered pair? X is what? One. Yeah, because the radius is one, X is one, and what is Y if you're sitting on the X axis? Zero. Zero, so the, at zero degrees, we have the 
ordered pair one zero. How about 90 degrees? What's that ordered pair on the y-axis? Zero one. Yeah. We went over zero, up one. What about 180 degrees? What's that ordered pair? Negative one zero. Yes. And then at 270 degrees, what's that ordered pair? Zero, negative one. All right. As we move through the first quadrant in a positive direction, notice that my X's are getting smaller. That one, I could think of as square root of four over two. Now, you can write that in pencil or something so you can erase it, but do you see how I could write one, or do you see that one is equivalent to square root of four over two? Say yes if you see that. Nobody's saying yes. Square root of four is two and two over two is one. Now you don't have, to, if you're wondering where did she get that? Don't worry about that yet. I'm just asking, do you see that one is equivalent to square root of four over two? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then watch what happens as we move through the fir um, first quadrant. We start out just looking at our 30, 45, 60, and 90 degree angles. We start out with square root of four over two square root of three over two, square root of two over two. Isn't that square root of one over two? And square root of zero over two. Our X's are getting smaller. Again, square root of four over two, square root of three over two, square root of two over two, square root of one over two, square root of zero over two. And our Y's are getting bigger because Y's are increasing as you move through the first quadrant. That zero, Square root of zero over two, square root of one over two, square root of two over two, square root of three over two. That one is square root of four over two. Now, if we were in class, I'm certain somebody would say cool. Is anybody thinking cool? Or everybody's thinking I'd rather be in class or I'd rather still be in bed. All right, I'm not gonna try to guess what you're thinking, but since we have about five more minutes, let me say that I want you to take your, one of your, um, either your green or your yellow circle. I don't mean circle, I mean triangle. Take your green or your yellow triangle that you use to mark the 30 degree angle, flip that across the X axis. Make sure you keep one side on the X axis. Mark the point where it intersects the circle. I want you to do that with your red triangle, with your tr yellow triangle, until you get all of the angles, multiples of 30 degrees marked in the whole unit circle and write the ordered pairs. The 30 degree angle that's right here, that's gonna be 30, 60, 90, 120, 150. That's gonna be about a 150 degree angle right here. And then when I flip it, what was I using? Uh, green? or yellow, I was using green. There, when you flip it across the Y axis, you're gonna get your 100 and, no, you're gonna get your 210 angle. And then when you flip that across the Y axis, you're gonna get your um, 330 degree angle. So when we meet again, here's what I want you to have done. I want you to Label all your multiples of 30 degrees and 45 degrees on the whole unit circle and write their ordered pairs. Does everybody get that? Yeah. Yep. 
Okay, yep. just, I, I don't feel like I did a fantastic job explaining it because I started out with my green and yellow, looking at them as making a rectangle rather than the two triangles. And it was just messing with my head for a minute. But now you should be able to use those to fill in the unit circle. Um, what we did not get to talk about today was radians. Um, you've read the definition of a radian. If you have a length equivalent to the radius and you lay that off on the unit circle, then that point that I've labeled P on the unit circle, that is one radian. If theta is the angle, now this theta looks like a 45 degree angle. That's just how I have it labeled. But if I drew in that one radian angle and said this angle theta subtends an arc that has the same length as the radius, that's the definition of what a radian is. We'll come back to this unit circle tomorrow um, and we'll label our radians on here or we'll label all of the angles that we have labeled in degrees, we'll label them in radians also. And then for day two, the video that we will talk about tomorrow, the 5.2 notes on the back of it has 5.1 homework and 5.2 homework. And the videos in YouTube are labeled day one and day two. I think day one has two parts. So you watch day one, part one, day one, part two, and try the day one homework that's written on the um, back of the notes. And then make sure you have this all filled in with degree measures, but not yet radian measures. After you do that, then you should be able to do the six problems in my math lab for 5.1. That's what's due in my math lab tomorrow. Does anybody have any questions? Everybody who's okay say, eh, I'm okay. Okay. I'm okay. I'm all right. Okay. That sounds like a majority. Um, let's go. And then if you need to email me any questions later today, you feel free to do that. And I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Or I'll hear you tomorrow. Y'all have a good day. You too. You too. Bye. -bye. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>